Oh, the projects and the things I get myself into. Have you ever been there? Hey, this is Bob at Party Shop Shenanigans. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to take a little walk around, a little deeper inspection on Mildred, my 1963 C10 with tandem rear axles. True tandem axle, half ton. I'll show you more about that. Stick around. The good news is that i um, got some pretty good body parts on this pickup that I can work with. Um, this fender um, has a little bit of fiberglass in it, but it's, uh, it's otherwise really solid. Um, hood isn't in that great a shape. Some pretty good damage here at some point that's been bondoed that's come off. Um, cab is in not good shape. Not sure if you can see up under here. This is all rotted out. That's no good to anybody. Uh, cap isn't too bad if a guy really had to use something, lots of holes in it, but I guess that was good for drainage. What's unique, however, is this little setup right here. Let's go around to the other side here. What it is, is it's two Eaton rear ends, and darn, I meant to look to tell you which they are. Um, they're a six bolt pattern, half ton Eaton rear end. And you'll see that um, there's a weld here and some interesting concoctions underneath here. And then a donor frame that was put on the back portion to hang a second axle. The story as I got it was that the fellow who built this had a race car, had a 12 foot wood deck on the back where he hauled things on and towed his race car around here in the Pacific Northwest. Again, that's what I'm told. I don't have any. Uh, providence on that, if you will. But let's set up uh, the tripod and uh, show you something unique about this twin screw. Uh, drive shaft in, pinion out, goes to this rear end, drives this, and let's see if everything spins the same direction like it should supposed to. Okay, so this is a more uh, common view of a rear end, um, things we're more accustomed to. You'll see um, the axle housing. In this case, this would be a, called a banjo style housing because you see the circle, okay? And then you've got this cover that's bolted on here. Bolted on, bolted on. If I take all those bolts off and I drop this differential cover, it will expose the gears inside there and all the inner workings. Now I can see up front here, let's move around and see if I can get you where you can see. It's kind of a mess right now, this poor truck. Um, you'll see, I've always called it the pumpkin, but this is where your input shaft comes in, in your uh, pinion gear, and they do all their magic inside to make the whirly gigs go Dudenheimer, right? If you are familiar with how a rear end looks, normally you would see that this particular rear differential, well, if I could get where you could see it, it's upside down. Yep, this would normally be down, and um, golly, this is so hard to get around here. Um, you can see how there's a distance that comes up here, and this is kind of flat. Um, this rear end at the back of this pickup has been flipped over, okay? Why would that be? Well, let's go up to the front and see. Sorry, someday I'll get one of those gyroscope deals that'll keep you from getting dizzy as I walk all around. So here is the front differential. And let's try to position this differently. Hang on. Okay, now I think you can maybe see just a little bit better what's going on here. So what we have is we have the front differential. Um, here's the drive line side. This is coming to the front of the pickup. This goes down. Okay, and then this pumpkin, I always call pumpkin, I have anyway, comes up. It's been um, the rear cover pulled off and a different set of gears put in the back. And so when I turn the drive line like this, it makes the wheels go forward. And we'll see that this is turning, let's call it clockwise, looking from the front back. And the rear 
is going counterclockwise, again looking from the front back. This is a homemade concoction that someone has assembled to create a throughput, uh, or what I've always called a twin screw, setup. There are brackets back here that uh, I can see this has been cut off of another vehicle. Um, they've put brackets for the shocks on here, welded on, all kinds of interesting things. But man, A for creativity. Now, the great news is that it's a true, uh, everything's running the same direction because if you can see this pinion going this way and the tires are going forward, when I make this pinion back here spin, it too is making the tires going forward. All this is missing is this short drive line to be a true tandem axle twin screw dual drive half ton rear end setup. Pretty darn crafty. Both open differential so there's no lockup or uh, conflict um, turning corners and um, anything with tires scrubbing the wrong way. But uh, someone was very creative and boy wouldn't you like to have this in your yard. <laughs> the other thing that's impressive to me is um, the fellow who built this, he had the whole thing plumbed, um, hydraulic brakes, drum brakes on both axles, um, plumbed all the way through, uh, air shocks on it. Uh, this was a running, driving, well, work of art without a question running down the roads here in the Pacific Northwest. So I'll try to do a little bit of real slow and careful walk around for those of you who want to take in some of your own details, right? So as we can see right here, here's the original frame, goes right back to about here. That's a donor from another pickup that's been grafted on. This pickup was originally a coil spring uh, rear suspension. I suspect that the pad would have been right up under here. That's just about in line with where the center line should have been for this axle originally. 108 inches, I believe this is originally a short wheelbase uh, half ton pickup. And uh, you'll notice a real tell that these springer uh, spring brackets have been put on is these are bolted on, they are not riveted. This is an original bracket to this frame. See how that's been riveted on? These are actually bolted. Okay, old exhaust hanger. Again, this has been bolted on where this frame was grafted and added on here. Um, went to this twin leaf spring, kind of a wonky setup, but hey, it must have worked for him. Okay, and then this interesting drop bracket here, look on the other side, a drop bracket to put this spring hanger on. Whoops, as I run into stuff, sorry to be making you so dizzy. But there you have a homemade concoction. Now, I'm not sure exactly how this suspension worked. Not really lined up. I don't imagine it was real smooth. Probably made a few extra groans and sounds. <laughs> don't know I would have put a great big load on it. But hey, I wasn't the guy driving it, right? Lots of extension of wiring. Now, I suspect a person could, if you're just a little bit crafty, could probably put the coil springs, torsion bars back up front, original setup, to this pickup, and I could probably sell this as a half ton short wheelbase pickup to somebody. Or maybe you want it and you can do that. When I look underneath here, you can see where these guys have been just cut off with a torch in the past. These were the torsion bars that would come back um, to the rear end original. These are just spare springs that. Um, there in the mix, so I brought them home. I don't know why. Maybe someday I'll win Forge and Fire <laughs> or not. But she is a work of art without a question. Big, long, 
and ready to wreak havoc. Quick look to the inside. I did get this door open. When I first brought it home, this door was stuck shut. Passenger door still stuck shut. This latch is rusted pretty bad. I had to pry real careful like to get it open. But uh, yeah, we've got rotted out doors pretty badly. Um, all the mechanisms in here, latch and, and door uh, window cranks are all rotted out, rusted. Um, yeah, lots of ventilation for sure. This uh, seat frame seems to be in pretty respectable condition, honestly. Um, not as full of mice as it would be if it were, say, in central Oregon. Nice green patina. Is that what we're going to call that on the seat? <laughs> yep, old Mildred's seen her better days. Now, this was a three speed truck in its original life, still has the three speed shifter um, column on it. Um, no controls for heaters or anything. That's all been taken out, and I don't think there's anything down in this mess. Again, I cannot get that door open just yet, but you see that. This has been painted nice, and you know, someone actually put time and effort into this pickup at one time. Kind of sad that it was left out in the weather just to go away. So, parts, parts she shall be. Mildred shall become parts, and uh, Stanley will be the beneficiary. Good old Stanley, who is my 62 service truck, sitting back here. Stanley's going to get a new smile with that new bumper and with a handful of parts. And then I still have to figure out whether I want to pull this 292. Now, just to keep things out of the weather, um, I have gotten the engine so it's no longer stuck. Pulled the exhaust manifold, these dual headers, this uh, Offenhauser intake manifold. Um, I just kind of stuck them back in here to keep them out of the weather for now. But I'm considering pulling this 292. Maybe I can rebuild it and put that in Stanley. Maybe it's just a boat anchor. Really hard to tell. I don't know. So there you have it right there. That's Mildred. That's our fun. That's as much as I've got for today. Hey, remember to hit the like button, subscribe, um, send me a comment or 10. Tell a friend or 10 about party shop shenanigans. I'd like to share some adventures with you. Go out and make somebody smile today. You both deserve it. Bob out.